left you up, very importantly. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, we've got a strange week because I'm just four miles away from um, being back in lockdown again in Leicester. So I'm just four, four miles away from the boundary in, into the countryside, thank goodness. So has enabled me to get out and see clients this week, which has been on Tuesday and Wednesday, which has been good. But it was uh, holding my breath for a few hours to see where that line was going to be. Ah, God, yeah, it must be a bit, bit nerve-wracking. I'm sorry, I'm doing, not doing very well with these uh, messages here, so let me just switch these off. Sorry, wait a second. There we go, we'll be back to... That's gone, that's perfect. Right, we've officially started, everyone, so thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Um, basically, we're very fortunate. We've got uh, David Pitt, Fox Pitts uh, join us today, and we'll uh, be introducing David properly in a, a few moments. Um, so if I just bear me a moment... Right, and uh, what would be great is, again, if you could very kindly introduce, if those of you who've just joined us, if you could just introduce yourself in the chat, that'd be great, and also tell us what you are really passionate about and how you like to make a difference. And if you've got a killer question, do, do feel free to drop that in. Uh, we always love hearing from people. And uh, what we, I'd also like to say a very big thank you for those who took part in the five-day challenge last week. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. and. Uh, what we covered last week was everything to do with market insights return to new normal. It was very relevant to what we've just been discussing. Uh, the importance of resilience, your 12 pillars for growing you and having a successful business, the social selling blueprint and your action plan for 2020 and beyond. Um, Stuart is with us today. And we'll be coming back to Stuart a bit later on, um, but uh, he will be sharing, and I'm very impressed actually, um, how he actually won the top prize. Because uh, I was absolutely dying to know, and uh, there was a bit of competition between Stuart and uh, Nikki in particular. I'm not sure Nikki's on the call yet today, but uh, uh, it was a very close run thing. Uh, Stuart managed to get 100%. Nikki got 90%. It was getting down to the stage. There was going to be a, um, a tiebreaker question having to tap into. Uh, but it was, so very exciting. We had lots of people entering that, and we had lots of other winners throughout the week. So. Uh, in fact, Alex, I think you're on the call today, so you were one of the winners, although I know you were telling us you weren't doing it for the, pro the money, you just wanted the fun of joining in, which I very much uh, appreciate. And uh, what I'd like to do is just very briefly introduce myself and then Chris and, and David, and we'll get on to the whole meter thing in a few moments or two as well. So uh, fundamentally, Business Growth Bureau was formed because I feel very passionate about helping other leaders and CEOs of companies grow their businesses. And what I feel I particularly love doing is building what I class as circular relationships. So trying to find ways of making everyone feel good about working with you and the other way around. So if you can think about your, your associates, your partners, your suppliers, your investors, your staff, um, and so on, if you could try to think of every single possible way you can make people feel good about working with them and demonstrate that you care, then it'll come back to you in space. And that's something interesting enough that uh, Alex shared with me a couple of days ago uh, he was saying in his role with IBM, uh, when he's responsible for 6,000 people, that he, the big thing that he liked to do is to really make his leaders feel quite special and demonstrate that he cared about them. And I think that's a really important. I know, Chris, you feel passionate about that, with everything to do with elevating leadership. And David, you're a master in doing all this good stuff yourself. So with no, Chris, what I'd like to do is give an opportunity for you to introduce yourself as well at this point, if that's okay. Yeah, hi, I'm Chris Cooper, and uh, my passion is really about how, helping leaders of, uh, of, of businesses, entrepreneurs to elevate themselves, elevate them, develop their people, and build really highly engaged workplaces. I'm the co-author of a book called The Power to Get Things Done, Whether You Feel Like It or Not, which was published by Penguin Random House New York. And I've, for the last nine years, I've hosted a radio show um, which also goes out as a podcast on Voice America. It's accessed in over 50 countries. And uh, last year, it was the most listened to show on the world's leading online radio pl platform. So I'm proud of that. And I got to get to meet amazing people through that. And uh, David is one of those uh, people who I've met through this kind of journey, who I'm incredibly excited today to to welcome, really. So, uh, yeah, welcome welcome to David. Yeah, good, lovely. David, to tell us a bit more about you. Really keen to hear a bit more. This is a bit of a quick intro. We'll give going to Chris going to a bit more depth with you in a moment. Yes. Sorry, Chris, do you want to 
Start oh, off with the Shall I just give you a little intro? Because uh, you're going to, with regards to David, because I think I'm not sure David will will sell this and share this, and um, because because he's achieved such incredible things in his life, and I've got to know David over the last couple of years, and his uh, and his lovely wife Jo and family, and um, David is I think one of life's rare characters his positivity is just off the scale and he's somebody who goes and makes things happen he has um created an, an organization called wild fox events he's been through things like sas training he has um he's a philanthropist he, he creates these amazing events um one of them being the, a quadrathlon which i was involved in last year and he's raised 40 million pounds for charity he was given an mbe by the um, by the royal family at the beginning of the year for his services and you know we're going to get to find out you know more about David soon and, and he's got a real passion particularly for helping young people do incredible things so um, David it's you know over there in Loch Tay in Scotland it's a pleasure and privilege to have you on the show today. Well Joel thank, thanks for that, that very um, kind introduction and it's it's a, it's a real honour to be on the show because um, one of my passions is passing on and, you know, passing on my tips of positive veracity, that word, which is, it sums it up. It means the positive attitude with a generous spirit. Yeah. And that's really the way we've led uh, our, our lives through World Fox. We put on a really challenging event, which you went through amazingly, did amazingly well. Um, and it, it raises money for charity. So you have a tough challenge. People challenge themselves and go through that journey of training and then they're putting back as well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that encapsulates the word positive veracity um, and the seven golden principles. So my, my passion, we still um, do events, but it's more now leading towards uh, getting out and spreading that word. Things that have really helped me achieve what I've achieved over the last 25 years. And I want to put back, help young people. And uh, as I mentioned earlier on, they were, we're, we're targeting school leavers, young people especially, who are leaving um, school now, a bit in limbo, a rising sense of panic, insecurity, worried about the exams, which never happened, results never happened, you know, that entrepreneurship that they were going to go to, that 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 that, um, that that course they were going to join just isn't happening. So, you know, we're looking at doing these courses to try and inspire them. But it's for everybody, really, that needs to be inspired. And I want to, you know, pass those words out of wisdom and, and help people. Yeah, and I think you certainly do. I, I thought I just want to share. I want to share. This is David's book, Positive Rosity, which uh, I think everybody should have a copy actually, because I, I I personally love this book and I'm encouraging my kids to read it in great detail. I just want to mention a couple of couple of quotes from his book, which I think are quite fascinating and and sum him up. You know, David is a bundle of positive energy whose main aim in life um, seems to be concocting ever more challenging ways for people to suffer. And in doing so, inspire themselves out of their comfort zone and along the road to personal improvement. And that was from Rob Wainwright, former captain of the Scottish rugby team. And when it comes to young people, um, there's a quote on the back of the book too. David Fox Pitt is a great man who continues to do so much to encourage adventure in young people in the UK. And that was Bear Grylls, the chief scout. So you you know a few people, David, from your, your journey. Um, as yes, well, you, do, you, you, do. You, meet some, you do meet some amazing people. And, um, and I know, know Rob, who's a, a real inspiration. So Rob has done a few of my events. He lives over in Col, so not, not far from here. And um, Rob's a great cyclist now. So he's also, you know, he, he goes from Twickenham to Murrayfield during the England-Scottish Games, cycling with the, the rugby ball. And Mark Bowman joins him. Mark Bowman's another great friend. So Mark Bowman, you know, we got him to go around the world. Uh, we, we introduced him to Artemis to sponsor him. So Mark and I go back a long way. Um, but yes, you know, you, 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 you get to work with some amazingly inspiring people. And, um, and it's all about how do we enhance, get it together and pass it on, you know, and help other people, the next generation, um, you know, get these ideas rather than spending hours, years and years and years trying to learn through their mistakes. And I was particularly fascinated by Rupert's comment, you know, that 80% of businesses, I picked this up on one of your uh, webinars, 80% fail in the first. Uh, five years. This is the United States and America businesses, you know, and like ninety-four percent um, of businesses have less than ten people in. Well, that's an extraordinary failure rate. You think of all that energy and time and money and investment, personal investment, going into setting up their own business, and then it fails within five years. And why is that? And I believe that it's, people aren't getting some of the stuff I talk about ingrained in them. 
uh, before they start setting out into the, the, the big bad world of starting their own business, which is very competitive, very tough, very uh, as is proven by your, you know, by your startling results. But so this is what we're doing. You know, we want to, you know, um, uh, and it, it all links to being positive. That positive attitude is so powerful. And if you can link that, you know, to giving back um, in, in, in what you do, giving back is so important. And that's why that link to charity and, you know, and I think if you look at COVID-19 and the amazing things that are going to come from this and the community spirit, which we may ever talk about later on, we're doing a lot with food banks and um, NHS grab bags and things. But, you know, I've, I've seen a real resurgence in community. So, um, yeah, I think there'll be a lot of exciting opportunities coming from this. There'll be a lot of businesses going, going out of business, a lot of people being laid off. But I think we've got to be positive. You know, it's a very difficult time. And, um, and we have to look at the ways where we can, you know, um, build up on the positive aspects of, of COVID. And do, do you think, uh, and I'm interested for people who are listening in today as well, who might uh, have 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 uh, young, pe young people in their family, teenagers, children, who are maybe, you know, going to university or thinking about taking a year off or they're coming out of university and wondering how on earth am I going to get a job? And so it'd be lovely to get some opinions from people, whether they're, you know, getting worrying about that kind of generation. And maybe we can also think a little bit through this as well about those um, em of us who are empl employers and employ people, um, you know, there's a young generation that's coming through right now, and they're a bit different, aren't they? Uh, they're a bit different well, to previous generations. So we've also got to think about how we motivate and inspire them. I, I think you're right. So I think it's, it, you know, it's, 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 it's a huge concern. I mean, they talk about the millennials. You know, Simon Sinek, um, as, as you know from America, is a very well-known speaker on the stage, and he talks about the millennials, uh, you know, people expecting things to be there. They expect... To, to, to graduate or, or go into a job and be CEO within the first sort of five years. And they don't understand that whatever you do in life is going to be tough. Anything you do in life is tough. Um, certainly organizing events from my point of view is, is really challenging. You know, all our events are outdoors in all weathers and, and we've had all weathers, I can tell you that now. Um, but if you've got that passion, that desire uh, that you really want to do it, come what may, that gets you through because whatever we do, we're going to get hit. We're going to get disappointments. Um, we're going to get knocked down. I, I was a massive under tree at school. I, I think I had undiagnosed dyslexia and I was just hopeless at everything. And I had to kind of retrain myself when I left school, totally unemployable. Um, and, that, and that's why, you know, I've, I've, I've you know, it's, it's had to sort of reinvent my whole life when I left school. Um, and it's been fantastic. It's been a very positive experience. But I, I, I start, you know, I left school with absolutely nothing. And, Feeling, feeling absolutely hopeless and helpless and, you know, not knowing what to do or, or, or where to start. So, I, so so having built up these traits, these seven golden principles, I know that I can absolutely make a difference to, to thousands of people. And that's why I'm so excited about this, because I know I can do it. I can see it happening. And it's all about building that belief, but also being honest with young people. It's not going to be easy. Whatever you do out there, it's not going to be easy. You're not just going to go into a, a, a cushy job and it's going to be simple. It's it's tough, but you have to. And so that's why that we talk about resilience, that grit. Um, you know, is so it is so important that, that we have that because if we don't, we will falter, and we won't get up again. And I think that the challenge I think for the, the generation coming out is you know maybe you know we need to build that grit up. And and I'll be honest with them and say it's not going to be easy. You know, whatever you do is going to be tough, and especially now as we're losing many many uh, jobs, the world's changing. We like. Fast forwarded 10 years. They're, they're talking about fast forwarding 10 years because of COVID. It speeded things up. You know, look at all the stuff we're doing on Zoom, which would have taken 10 years. We're like 10 years ahead. Look at the schooling. Kids doing everything at home now. I think it's too much online stuff. I wish they'd do more outdoor. I'm not trying to get them out, get off the phone, you know, get off the device. But I think um, resilience is, is, is where we need to, you know, um, and that's my whole life. Putting these challenges on has been putting people through pretty tough challenges. And Chris, you did it. Uh, what what did you think of that quadrathlon? Uh, well, I, I remember it was it was amazing. But I always remember speak being at dinner at your house and and uh, and a chap James who'd done this a few years earlier. I think he did really well and came third. His his team. I asked him, could he give me a tip because I just had this seed of an idea that maybe I might like to do it. And he said to me, he said this, I can give you one tip. If you consistently train, this was September between every you know, consistently, day in, day out, between now and July, it'll be the best day of your life. If you don't, it'll be the worst. 
And uh, you know, miles from me across Lotte at dawn, I couldn't really swim. I could do half a length of front crawl and then 15, seven mountain rows, 15 miles, seven mile kayak, 34, 36 mile hilly bike ride in a day. Um, that's quite a lot to train for, isn't it? But wasn't it amazing? And uh, it all happens from your home as well, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, just, just that event as an example. So we've, we've organized 17 events like the Quadrathon. Um, and the Quadrathon uh, raises money for Mary's Meals and Mercy Corps. And that's raised over 9 million in 21 years. So Artemis, the sponsor, Artemis, you know, they, they cover the costs. And everybody doing the event has to raise minimum 450. Some people raise a lot. The biggest raise from one person was 85,000 pounds about 10 years ago. So, you know, people can raise a lot of money and we get match funding from EEC and DFID. But when I set that up, you know, over 21 years ago, there were people, even the people in the regiment saying, David, you'll never ever get people to that. It's absolutely impossible. And, you know, and the thing in life is how often do we have a dream? Do we have a passion? Do we have something we're really excited about? And then it's normally a member of the family or the mother or, or your best friend saying you're not qualified, you're not good enough, or you're, you're stupid, or, you know, and, then, and we go, oh, right, or maybe they're right. Had I listened to those people and said, yes, maybe they're right, maybe it's too tough, we can't get people swimming a mile across the lock, running seven in rows, canoeing eight, cycling, cycling 39, then we wouldn't have raised the money we've raised. We wouldn't be feeding 10,000 children every day in Malawi, £13.90 to feed one child for a whole year on the Mary's Meals program, phenomenal. Um, and we wouldn't be have helped all those millions of people through the Mercy Corps programs around the world, working with women's groups. Maybe you do everything through the women's groups because they look after the children and all the microfinance done through the, the mothers, not the dads, the, the mothers, because 95%, 98% gets paid back. They tried it through the dads, it's like 34%. So everything's done through the mothers. And, uh, and, and, and that's, that's the why. That's the why we do this. You know, people get challenged. Chris, you were challenged. You raised a lot of money. You're amazing. But we do it because of the end user. And Mary's Meals were going to be the only only beneficiary this year. We would be feeding 40,000 children for a whole year in Malawi. That's not happening because of COVID. So that's the downside of these events not happening. So here I am looking down on the field, which would normally be full of marquees now, getting ready for the Saturday, which would have went when we would have had the event. And it's just grassed up to my waist, uh, no tents, and 40, uh, you know, 40, you know, 40,000 less children being fed. So that's the, that's the downside. But yeah, so so the, one of the main points I, I, I want to instill to young people is that you have that belief and that dream, and you can do it. And that's why I got a series of points that I take them through. And it's building up that, that belief and not listening to the naysayers, the negative people, and reading all the negative stuff. Most of the news is negative. We try not to read the news. Um, I think you think about David the you know, the what I took away from the you know, one of the things the quad and from your book as well and these all these points we're talking about young people here but they're relevant to everybody to all of us who are you know in business and, and in life at the moment and you know with the quad I think you know with your your attitude and I see this in in Rupert as well this is about a can do attitude isn't it you know yeah. and, the, and you know, I can do this despite the obstacles, and I can despite. And and I also think what you do is you challenged yourself big time. You you put yourself through SAS training. You know, so you um you learn to challenge yourself, and now you're able to challenge others. Exactly. Well, you know, I'm not a war hero. I, I signed up for the TA version of the SAS. Went through selection. It was one of the toughest thing toughest things I've ever done. Um, uh, and but what that did teach me is it built up that 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 extra resilience. So I know now I can go through a lot more pressure. I don't think I would have handled these events if I hadn't had that sort of, it doesn't have to be SAS training, it could be marathon running, it could be doing some, you know, resilience training. But what that did is set a bar of pain that I can now resist, that I would not have resisted had I not done that training, because they push you to your limits. So that's just an example of building up resilience and then having that impact. But I think it's, you know, the key thing is, 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 is having that belief that what your idea is, whatever it is, you can follow through with it um, and the younger you are, the more difficult it is because you haven't had that experience. Or, or you know, you know, you've, you've you've been told by your parents, yes, yes, you're amazing, you're amazing, amazing, amazing. Then you hit mainstream, and it, you get part of no, you're not, you're stupid, you're not. And then it's you hear no so many times by the time you're 15, 16 that you you've done done that positive velocity down. So what we're trying to do is build that up again. Um, and and the example I give was is over COVID nineteen when we were locked down. You know, we were we were you know. Um, Sasha was playing the bagpipes on the balcony we're in the country and like an owl replied, you know, wit to wit to woo. We thought, well, that's actually not doing any good to the nurses and doctors. What can we do that's going to make a difference? 
So we, we, I borrowed a friend's Tesco, ex-delivery Tesco van, and we put these wonderful grocery grab bags together. And then I was delivering, you know, from Monday to Friday to 13 hospitals for the next eight, nine weeks. And we delivered over 6,000 wonderful grocery grab bags with three or four meals and really nice luxury goodies to NHS frontline workers in hospitals. And of course, um, the family were very worried. I was going out there, you know, meeting. So that was the, the objections. What are you doing going out there? What, what happens if you're going to be a super spreader? And, you know, and all those, as an example, those things that would normally push you down. But, you know, I took precautions, face mask. Um, my, my only one in Scotland seems to be wearing one now. You know, gloves, um, sanitation. And I did all the packing here. So it didn't involve any other volunteers. And we got around it. And it was a great success. And we helped with food banks. So the, 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 whatever you do in life, you're going to come up with objections and why you can't do it or why it's not going to work. But you've got to get around that because if, if we all think like that, nothing's going to happen. And then you look at the downside of your idea not happening. Had I not done that quadrathlon, you know, 21 years ago, would those 10,000 kids be fed every year? No, they wouldn't have done. Nobody else is going to step up to the plate because there's still 40, no, 50, 60 million kids out there in the world now not getting a meal. 60 million. That's disgraceful in this day and age when there's so much wealth and there's plenty to go around. So my point is there's plenty of, of good things we can do. And it's that it's having that belief and, and, and that confidence and obviously the knowledge and the wonderful thing that this, this, this course and the five day challenge that I've been listening to brings to people is the real nitty gritty of setting up businesses. Then it's all the other stuff like that belief and that that posrosity and, and, and how not to you know wallow in the negative news. I, I try not to look at the news. I, you know, every every day it's so depressing about another another hundred thousand have died in America. Now, you know, it's just and all that does is eat away at that positive attitude. And you think, oh, maybe maybe everybody is dying. I'm just not going to get out. You know, and you don't do anything. So, um, yeah. And one of I mean, one of the things with the you know, the COVID, your reaction to it, you know, I thought what was quite incredible. Within you know two or three weeks, you'd you you decide got an idea, you got a dream. You decided to start it. You raised one hundred and ten thousand pounds to go and help these people on the front line. And not only that, what you discovered—you've been helping children in Malawi. But tell us what you discovered about Dundee and the people in Dundee, because you've been helping families there as well with with food yeah. supplies. Well, we we set up. Uh, my late aunt died uh, very sadly, very young, about a year ago. So we set up a charity in her name called Savorn's Trust. So her husband Alexander, um, we supported him doing that, and. You know, we'd raised about 20, 30,000 pounds before COVID, this was, you know, and because we were planning a walk in May and that was cancelled to, to raise money. Uh, but then what's what's really interesting, so we set up this food bank thing. So we was working with 100 families in Dundee. Dundee is one of the most deprived cities in the UK, believe it or not. The average age in one of the areas where we work is 45 years. Average age life expectancy, that's like Eritrea. This is in our, one of our cities in Scotland. It's disgraceful. So we're working with um, 100 families there, and we're working with 100 families in um, Edinburgh through Muir House. And we did the, the grocery grab bags uh, and also some local PP equipment, which we just couldn't get. So none of our frontline people around um, Tayside had any, so we got some in um, and we got it there you know, when they needed it because there wasn't any in the care homes. But the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that you know, um, when we started that program with NHS grab bag, suddenly, you know, we put notices out. People were, were, were great, something we can support. And then the money came in. One donation of £50,000 from one, one person, a great friend of mine who died two years ago. It was his father actually who put the money in because um, he saw action was being taken. He didn't want to just put it into a fund for it to sit there. And that's what I call serendipity, girth and dipity. It's what you see something happening. It attracts all this other positive stuff, and um, and then you can grow it. And now we had a really good meeting just last week with the Dundee School, and uh, we're looking at introducing special outdoors. So it's getting it's wild time offline, getting kids out, um, and these kids don't do a lot of going out. So and especially after lockdown, they haven't gone out. And 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 uh, you know, talk about mental health. I hate that word, but it's going to be used every day now. It's sort of 10, 15 years ago, we wouldn't have heard of it. You know, we we just told put yourself together, get on with it when we we're young. But mental health is a massive thing now, and we have to deal with it. So we need to get them out. So we've got a really exciting program going, and we're looking at setting up a Saturday club where we'll come and cook pizzas um, uh, to, the, to the parents and the children, and we'll have four or five stands, one doing first aid, one doing a football academy, one doing um, skills, life skills, and we're going to try and set that up every Saturday in, this, in a city school in Dundee. 
and um, so that that's that's really exciting. But you know, with with unemployment increasing as furlough finishes, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and we're going to see a massive increase in demand for food banks, as we're seeing all over. And you're talking about getting a minister for food banks in the country. So and, and yes, so it's, it's taking action. Once you take action, you get on with it. People see it, and it brings all this electricity and activity and positivity in, and it helps you. It doesn't, David. And what Mimi's um, raised a question which um, fits perfectly here because she's asked us, you know, can you give us a tip for maintaining your self belief um, when things aren't going how you want them to? Because uh, there's a third principle in your book is about overcoming obstacles. And I wonder if you might want to share you and you and Neil Lawton, who was on the show recently. You you decided to do a penny farthing ride from Lands End to John O'Groats to raise money for charity on a penny farthing. I'm meeting you on one of the legs, and you overcame all sorts of obstacles there. So I wonder if there's a you know, a tip there from that event that might help Mimi. Yeah. Well, well, well Mimi, hello, David. I, I, th I think, yes, I mean, I spend my life putting other people through challenges like you, Chris. You came up and did the quad. So I need to set an example. So every now and then I put myself through a challenge. I do all the events organized, by the way. I don't just organize them. I do them in, in the allotted times. But, you know, it, and Neil Lawton introduced me to the penny farthing about five years ago. And we thought, well, let's, let's do a really good challenge. And I said to Neil, I'm only going to do this if we're going to raise money for charity, otherwise it's you know you know we could have died a couple of times uh, on the route, and, it, and and so we had to have a, a cause for it. So Mary's Meals again was our cause, and um, you know it was daunting. I mean, uh, riding a penny farthing is is a, is a fantastic experience. It's like being on a horse. You're high up, but the downside if you fall off that thing, it, it hurts. Um, and also there's the training. I borrowed Mark Bowman's Watt bike, and that broke down in about four. It just wouldn't sync up my phone, so I literally had four sessions on it, and it and it didn't work. And I, so I then had to go back to the penny farthing, which is every time you take that thing out, you're risking your life. So the Lands End John and Groats was um, about nine, just under 900 miles in 11 days. We were doing about 80 to 100 miles a day, and we were living in a camper van. Um, and it was it was so maybe my advice to you. So that that was a challenge. If we looked at the overall thing, uh, it would have been over overwhelming. I mean, after the first day, horrific weather, 80 miles up to Bude. The second day was the worst day through Devon from Bude to to to, to um, Thornton, up and down, almost killed us. We thought, my, you know, and uh, and then and it's just it was just taking every day, so it's step by step, uh, because if you look at the the big picture, if you if you've got an idea, maybe or a big challenge or a, or or a business, and you look at the the big picture, it can be too daunting sometimes. So you've got to break it down. You break it down, and we just took every day. You know, it's like. 10 miles stop for a for a, for a, for a glass of juice another 10 miles double whiskey another uh, three you know three hours with another 10 miles so every 10 miles we stop for a break and then the back side got so sore because you're sitting on this penny farthing you, you can't stand up because the wheels pedals are connected to the wheel and uh, so I was doing every 20 miles I was stopping Neil tend to stop every 10 miles and uh, and then it was that Democles sword uh, of a car knocking you off potentially or a lorry lorries are good but um, foreign campervan drivers were just lethal, so we had that <laughs> going past us every every you know minute, and the traffic was horrendous. And then the losing control, going downhill on a penny farthing, lock clipped in, was was probably the most terrifying moment. And then I had a crash in Lancaster halfway up. Luckily, it was wasn't going that fast, but I went over the handlebars, you know, and, and hurt my shoulder and leg quite badly, but didn't break anything, thank God. Um, and then a few more near death experiences, but it was it was just taking it. You know, step by step by step, we tend to stop near a pub, have a pub meal, and then we were like sort of dead. You know, crash out for for, for twelve hours, and we go off at six in the morning as well. But right the way through, and Chris joined us halfway up. But I think it's just a little and often having that belief, um, and we were in some pain as well. Neil had a crash, I think, a week before, so he was in a lot of pain. Um, so we had a physio, um, and it was just you know listening to you know. Uh, nutritionist like not not to have a cooked breakfast which we unfortunately broke that law about four times and paid for it uh it should be just porridge um but it was just so just little 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 bite-sized chunks um you know and then day one then you look on day two and you're, you're just focusing on that next day focus and then you're breaking that day down to say 10 sections so that that's that's how it worked for us you know and the quadrat yeah. that i mentioned that, that you know that started with just two of us doing it and then the next year there were 15 then there were 34 then there were about 80 it's almost doubled every year so it grew organically now it's up to about 350 400 and this is the 21st it would have been the 21st anniversary this saturday covid's killed that one 
So, um, and, and you build up, and it's like a business, you build up, you know, and you, you, you build up and, um, and, and manage within your resources and have that faith that what you're doing is making a difference. And my faith is the fact that that event, you know, if you divide £13.90 into £25,000, I don't have any mathematicians there, that's the amount of children that we fed because of the, the penny farthing thing. Um, so, yes, it was worth it at the end of the day because we, 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 we survived. There were one or two near ones. Um, but, um, yeah, so it was a, a, yeah, a good challenge. Having cycled with you on my road bike and seen you going through red lights because you can't stop on a penny farthing in the same way, um, it was uh, amazing that you uh, you got through it. And you know, the pain Neil was in after his, uh, I think it had been for some sort of world record attempt or something on a penny farthing the week before and come off and it was uh, and crashed. It was uh, quite amazing. But what I also was interesting, just the small things, how, how the how – the, when you set set yourself um, a, a an obstacle or something, you got some obstacles to overcome. How almost like there's a hidden force that sometimes comes to your rescue. I remember you didn't have anywhere to stay that night or park the your camper van and and your kind of support crew. And I think somebody rang up uh, a vicar and uh, in the area that you were heading to he said, "Yeah, sure, you can come and park." Um, uh, in the local community centres, and also I can open it up. You can sleep there for the night, and suddenly you had a yeah. space for you to be able to have physio, and just the way the world opens up when you do things um, and take because, action. You know, you're right. It, you know, it's, I call it serendipity. You know, once people see the electricity, electricity starts to come in, and it's just the doing it. And, and you're right. And there are so many generous people, and also the, the the backup vehicle had a sort of sign, so people knew who we were doing it for, so they could look look at Mary's. It was called Miles for Meals. You know, uh, sponsors fifteen pounds feeds a child for a year. It's thirteen pounds ninety, but it's fifteen pounds now, um, and and that was very powerful. You know, and, and if we hadn't had that place, because we were just crashed in the, in the camper van anyway, so you know, already put a tent up for the support team. So it was, but it was wonderful to have that, and, and people are so generous uh, and giving. And it was great to see you joining us for a leg. You know, it um, it sort of it, you know, broke down that 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 monotony. But it was um, yeah, it was it was an amazing amazing few days. Uh, another principle in your your book, and I think it relates to this too. It's interlinked. It's about taking responsibility. And I always say to people, you should take a hundred percent responsibility for things. A really helpful helpful frame. And I've been um, I've actually been quite proud of my my eldest son um, Matthew during the lockdown. He's found homework quite hard, but he decided football was important for me. I want to be a great footballer. I want to improve it, and also I want to develop myself um, with a YouTube channel. So uh, Matty, Matty TC has now got a YouTube channel. He's putting some brilliant football videos and things that he's collating and, and he's taking responsibility. So, I mean, I think just thinking with, with our kids, you know, to see them taking some responsibility um, for things and giving them some support in doing it, I think is a good, it's, it may seem like small things, but it can turn into big things, can't it? But tell us about you taking responsibility in the power, Paris to Athens hitch that you did. Yes, well, well, I think, yes, you, you're absolutely, the buck stops, and this is the most important thing, because I think we love blaming other people, don't we? We love blaming Brexit, you know, now it's COVID-19, the mother-in-law, you know, we love blaming other people. And the moment, this is fascinating, the moment you accept responsibility for your own actions, the buck stops with you like a cloud moves over. Because all that governments are there to do is just set the guidelines whether it's, as I said, with Labour or Conservative or Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. Taxes a bit more, a bit less. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to work within the parameters. You know, you know, we don't, you know, there's no point of complaining about it. You've just got to get on. And I think the trouble is if you start blaming other people, then you have an excuse for why you failed, why it went wrong, because you're not taking personal responsibility. It's like really, really important. The, the, the London to Athens thing was uh, I, I'd committed a penniless student and I committed to go to see a friend in Athens who was there on holiday picking apricots and I was planning to go to Paris get the magic bus uh, and in those days no credit cards I didn't have any money parents didn't have any money and I, I got to Paris and the, it was full you know it wasn't one of these things you booked you just turned up so I thought well you know I've made a commitment to go and see my friend I'm going to crack on and do it so I hitchhiked all the way down um, you know, tw I had 21 lifts over seven days uh, and ran out of money so sort of halfway down Yugoslavia um, but but the, I suppose the, the the point is it was it was a fa it was an extraordinary experience because I was a bit like a refugee, in a way you know I, I was uh, I had no money I was literally scavenging off uh, mainly German uh, uh, tourists who gave me lifts 
and um, and I went in a couple of restaurants. I was cooking. I was cleaning the dishes in restaurants to get food. But I remember going through Dubrovnik um, early in the morning with no money and seeing all the wonderful market and the fruits and not being able to uh, not being able to to buy the fruit. And but what that did was it built up empathy. And I think one of the most important things is to empathise for people, other people less fortunate than yourselves. If you haven't been through that experience that they've been through, how on earth can you empathise with somebody? So I was sleeping on the beach, she's sleeping rough. You know, I was on Nice Beach on the way through and you got hosed down at three in the morning with a really powerful uh, fire hydrant hose. All the all the people sleeping on the beach were, were, were actually washed off and uh, we had to carry on. Um, and then you met some really kind people that, that gave you food. Uh, but uh, but most of it was people just didn't care about you. You know, you just you were just another bum wandering through. Um, in Italy, they didn't stop for you at all. They just don't like hitchhikers. That was a nightmare. Um, but you know, I learned a lot of lot of lessons. I got down to Greece, met up with my friend. You know, can't put the tent up. Lived off apricots for a week. Um, worked on the apricot farm, and then I he lent me some money to get back. Um, but that that taught so many lessons, which I'll never forget. That's why I have a huge empathy for refugees. And that was nothing, by the way, compared to what refugees go through. Just let's make that quite clear. That was seven days of hardship, but nothing compared to what refugees are going through. And because I've had that experience, I empath empathize with them. And, you know, we, we, you know, we, we, we support them now through Mercy Corps um, and these wonderful programs we do. And, um, and it's like visiting Mary's Meals in, in Malawi where we feed the kids. Once you go there and you see those kids, they get that nice cup, cup full. It's a nice cup full. Here we are. This is my cup, wild fox cup. Look, imagine that full of nutritious porridge they get every morning served by the mums and the grannies and the aunties who do it on a voluntary basis, that's why it costs £13.90 to feed a child for one year at school, because the mums and the aunties and the grannies, not the dads, grannies come and get the food ready. And they get a nice bowl of porridge, and they go to school because of that porridge, otherwise they wouldn't go to school. So they learn how to read and write, and more like to get a job and come out of poverty. Until you've actually seen that, you, you can't build the empathy. When you've got your own children, and you know how they feel when they've had a meal, you, you hear about it, don't you? Well... You go down there and they get one meal. That's often the one meal they get. The one meal they get. And that's why they go to school. So, and you build up this empathy. And, and, and that's why, you know, when you put an event like the Quadrathenon, you think, my God, it's not happening this year. Ah, and it's a pain in your chest because you know 40,000 kids. This year it would have been 40,000. Normally it's 10,000 because they're benefiting from the whole event, not going to get fed. And, and that's what drives me on to, to continue what I'm doing. If it was just for the sake of putting people on the hill for a tough day out, it wouldn't excite me so much. You know, mm -hmm. Chris, I don't know what, what did you raise again? Was it four or five thousand? Yes, yeah, something like four thousand. Divide like that. that by thirteen pounds ninety. That's how many kids that you'll be impacting. You know? Yeah. Pl plus yeah. support for, for most people. So, I think that that that's what excites me, and and uh, and, it, and it's having that. So I think take responsibility, um, and um, and it was a good learning exercise, a really good uh, school of hard knocks. Just that seven days, you know. And it's good. Um, I guess it's good for. You know, for children as well to be having these experiences and maybe experience that life isn't as comfortable. Do you think? Do you think people people are saying that you know, COVID? You know, we're really worried about our children's mental health. Do you do you think there's some benefit in it? You know, going through a bit of hardship. Are we protecting them too much? I don't know. I just wonder right now. Well, I know. I think I think there's a lot of comparisons between to our parents' generations who went through the war. Yeah, uh, don't forget they were being bombed, and you heard endless radio interviews. You know, it was nothing like what we went through. They went to the war; they're being bombed. You know, both my grandparents fought in the war, and you know, and 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 it's that resilience. You know, we've just been told to sit, sit, you know, and and watch the telly and and eat at home. But I, we're lucky because we we can go into the fields now. People in the in the cities don't have that, so I, I can imagine what a nightmare it must be three yeah. or four kids in a high rise flat or with no garden. I don't, that, that must be horrendous. So I think. And that's why we're doing these programs with the schools in Dundee. It's called Wild Time Offline. We want to get these kids out. Every year we host 200 inner city kids from Edinburgh and Glasgow up here, three or four days. Some of these kids have never seen a green field. They've never seen a cow, never been on the water, never been on a bike. And we've gotten up here for four days. And you see the change in those children in those three or four days is absolutely phenomenal. We should be doing hundreds of these courses, but there isn't any money for young people because they don't vote. And it's often the first thing to go. So, you know, so there is so much we do with, um, you know, with, with young people. And, and I believe that the outdoors is a great leveler. It's a great uh, resilience builder. Uh, and you learn so much about other people about through leadership and about things that can happen. So I think, 
you know, if I was a minister, if I was in Boris's uh, shoes, I would put a huge amount of investment into young people, massive, because I've seen what it does. Frontline, I've worked with Neil Lawton, who's taken up British Schools Exploring groups up here. We've hosted British Schools Exploring for three years. A lot of these kids, have, some of them come out of prison, some have been in trouble. And they're just like any kid. And they've just been, they've just got off on the wrong side. They've had, their parents have gone astray or on drugs or inner city. And they're all incredibly intelligent and um, they, do, they just need guidance, yeah. you know, and that resilience and that, you know, uh, and, and that. And I was very lucky. I have a, a positive parents, you know, still together. And, you know, you can only imagine what it'd be like if, if you didn't. I might have got about probably five minutes before we yeah. need to, to end, end, end this now, unfortunately. Um, go, but I think, um, and move on to some other areas that uh, we need to, to look through today. But I, I think, what I think with you, and my experience of you that I really became very, the first time we met together and I, you invited me very kindly to come and stay with you and the family and, and our family in, in Loch Tay was that you are, your why, because Rupert talks about this a lot, you know, you, you is absolutely focused on helping people. And every conversation is, we, we, you know, you think about the, the, the hardship for you in terms of doing something, but it's, it's like, but if we don't do that, Chris, we're not going to be able to feel, feed these children. You know, they're going to go without a meal. Um, we're not going to be able to feed these um, the people who are struggling in um, near, nearby Dundee. And uh, you know, you're you're so focused on that big why. Um, and, and, I, and I think the thing I sort of sense and I found through doing the quad and when I've done charitable activity is that I know it's a principle of yours. And if you help others, you also help yourself, don't you? Yes. Yes. Well, absolutely. There's there's no. I mean. You know, that, that's in my six. So we talk about my course. I know I see one or two blogs coming in. Um, so, you know, we, we talk we talk, we talk about the, the, the value that gives you. So when you go down, when I went to Malawi, for example, whether it's Dundee or Malawi, you get that sense of, wow, you know, I could be, I could be, I could have been brought up in Malawi. I could have lived in Malawi or been born in Malawi and would be in exactly the same position that they're in with the corruption, the poverty, and not having access to free education, food that we have over here. And the law, the, the the rule of law. So I think you know, um, helping others is, is is fantastic. And when you see those thousands of kids at school, you know, receiving those meals, it's wow. You know, you know that this is why this is what I'm doing. What I'm doing It's that like reinforcement, and and you and you feel better. You know, uh, and that's why we're putting this this, this what I call this breakthrough course on. So this is the thing we talked about. You know, you know. So what what can young people do? So we're putting up this this breakthrough course which will be online for six days. Um, and then we're going to host retreats. I think um, Michael was asking that on, on one of your blogs. We're going to host groups of, of, of um, school leavers, I know 18 or above, it has to be 18 or above for, 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 for insurance, for a three-day intense immersion into positive rosity, into the thinkings of, you know. And then, you know, so I, I've got a story to tell. I've got things that have happened. And I know how they've happened because of certain things that I've done and others can do. I learned through my own experience, but I wish somebody had told me when I was 18 or 19 these things that I now, now know, because mm. I would have got off to a quicker start. I had lots of knocks and things going wrong earlier on. Um, and I, I would have, you know, been a, so I want to try and impart these things. So I do do talks to schools and universities and some companies, but it's the young people I want to inspire. Um, so this program is, is going to be online through the David Fox Pit Club. But also, it's 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 going to be. We're going to have a, a residential up here in Scotland, where you stay, Chris. This very place, you know. And we'll be camping out because of the, the COVID thing. And we're going to immerse them in three or four days of positivity. So they'll they'll leave with a lot of these traits ingrained in their psyche. So hopefully, they can go on, and uh, and then you know put some of their plans into action. Uh, excellent. Well, I know you know you you uh, from reading your book and getting to know you. You know the stories that you'd be able to tell around a campfire to. Um, help, ch help, help children. I know you nearly died on a on a volcano in the top of, on, in New Zealand, being stranded for eighteen hours in a snowstorm. Um, we we don't need our children to do that. It's quite good if someone else has has had that experience, so you don't have to go through it yourself and can share the lessons. But David, I know one of the the final principle in your book we've got to finish here is give massive thanks. And uh, I'd like to give massive thanks to you for what you do and the the contribution you're making to the world. And um, you know, it's a principle we should do. I look at the, you know, and as a thanks, I'm sure from frontline staff for all the the good that you've done for them and the people of Dundee and 
you know, you're leaving a, a great legacy. So, you know, thank you for today. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. DavidFoxPit.club, if you want to find out a little bit more about, uh, and I think you can actually try this um, this program for a few days that David has uh, done and have a free go of that if you're listening live. Um, otherwise, um, there's a very small, very, very small fee to have a, a little go at it. And I think it'd be a great gift for our kids, for our, our children um, and teenagers right now. It could be really helpful. Thanks, David. Not at all. I think just to finish off, I think on, on that thanks, giving thanks is so important. You give thanks for your life, the fact that you are able to do something. When you get up in the morning, you thank, give thanks, you know, for the house, for everything you have. That's so important. It's, that, it's, that, it's called gratitude. I love that word, gratitude. It's a really, really important part of it. And we don't take what we have for granted because it can just go just like that. And then if you've got the ability to do something, do it, you know, and, and the point is you can do it. But thank you for having me on. And I hope that, you know, anybody listening, you know, pass the word around and, and, and contact us. Have a look at our, 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 our course, you know, and you'll find it very powerful because it's built together from personal experience. And it does work. It's not good. Will it work? Might it work? Well, it does work because it has worked. And we need to get it out there to a lot of more people. And, and, and there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. You know, the, the, the world's in a, it's a bit of a mess. And we need people to step up to the plate and, and make a difference. Thanks, David. Yeah, well, friend, Rupert. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. So thank you, David. I mean, that's I've been behind the scenes listening to it and trying to reply to a few of the comments with uh, Mural. I think, Michael, uh, I think most of the questions uh, have been answered as we've gone along. I know, uh, Michael, you referred to how does their poverty, I can't say the word, positive can start. Uh, Rupert. <laughs> Obviously, there's nothing I'm missing there. Um, but uh, you know, how did it ultimately start? Uh, but I think we'd probably cover that, and we a bit earlier on in the interview. Um, I think Michael, you were also asked about reading material that probably leads in very well into your book, one way or another, doesn't it? That uh, are there any other tips that you would uh, uh, recommend uh, relating to that at all? Yes. Well, I, well, I've got you know. So, so how does it start? It starts just by being positive and having a can-do attitude to things and not being put off by the naysayers. And it starts in your own little way, because you're not going to go from average neggy to massive pause overnight. It takes time to build up, build up, build up, build up that habit, the habit of positivity. So we, we've got our book, the, 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 um, well, the positive positivity and the seven golden principles. Um, and, and that's really about telling a story, making a point. And, and we've got cards as well. So I've got these, these cards that back up um, and every day you take a different card out and they back up a principle. So it's about reinforcing, reinforcing. And one of the most important things which we cover in the planning and purpose, which is which is number two, is the importance of mind mapping. So every time I've got a, a project on, I'm just going to show you this quickly if you can see it. It a, it's a, looks, probably looks like a complete mess from the viewers. But this is my mind map that I put together for my Operation Grab Bag, over 6,000 grab bags, PPE equipment, working with food banks. That's my master plan because once you get it down on paper, the colors, the contacts, it sinks into your into your psyche, into your subconscious mind. And every day you see it on the wall, you see it in the afternoon, in the evening. It will, but I haven't called that person. And it becomes an obsession and it goes into the subconscious mind. And as you sleep, the answers and the blueprints come out. That is one of the most important things. So I talk a lot about the creating of mind maps around your vision, writing it down. Very, very powerful. And very few people do that. We don't know enough about our subconscious mind. But what I can tell you is that once you do that, you know, it, the, the project happens. It happens. And I've proven it time and time again. I'm surrounded by these mind maps all over the place. People come to my house and they're completely dotty. Uh, but that's what I have because it absolutely works. Because if you look at the other thing, look at the distractions. Look at the kids now on their iPhones, all the distractions going on. And the biggest problem we have is we're not focusing our attention on one thing. It's ping, 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 and they're, they're not focusing. And that's one of the biggest disasters about this digital age, even though there's a lot of fantastic things on it, is that we're not focusing on our projects. So that, that is the thing I want to get. You know, write it down in colorful, exciting mind maps. Get the project there, and it will be ingrained, and then it will happen. If you don't write it down, it won't happen. I'd like to just back that up, actually, David, because uh, I've, funny enough, I've never been checked, a bit like you. I left school at the age of 16 without any qualifications at all, despite my posh voice. Uh, I ended up by going out. Fortunately, unemployment was only half a million people at the time. 
So I was offered lots of jobs at the time. But uh, these days, obviously, it's a lot tougher. But um, one of the things I, uh, I believe I'm, is actually dyslexic. It mainly comes out when I write. Uh, so I got my letters and words the wrong way around. So hence, I always use an iPad or a computer. And a mind mapping for me is really useful. And I, if I write things on a mind maps, I, c I can't read it. So there's no point in doing that. But what I do do is some really good software tools, which make yeah. up for so I think one of the great things with um, dyslexia as well uh, is that fortunately we're so lucky these days because if we have got certain challenges in some way, we can use some of those tools and really leverage them. And, of course, there's lots of support. And it's so nice with people like you, David, for example, who share, um, you know, all these good things. Um, so, and I think Michael's made another great point here um, as well. Uh, it's interesting about Simon Sinek, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, Renato always comes up with some very profound points as well. So thanks for sharing that, Renato. Um, just a point of interest: is your book available on all Audible, uh, David? No, no, it's not yet for enough. We're 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 just about to um, we're, we're we're talking to our publisher about doing that. But at the moment, it's 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 on um, it's it's on, it's on Amazon, or you can get it from our website. So davidfoxbit.club. You can get everything through all our courses through that. So. Okay. Or dot com, but um, but we are working on the audiobook now, and we have been told we need to get that. Yeah, the book's about to come out. Yeah, we're not sure. David, the moment you get that on Audible, I'll be the first one in the queue to buy it. Buy it, yeah. so uh, download it. So, uh, well, especially yeah. if, you know, if, uh, Ruben, if you're doing lots of driving, it, it's a great thing to have. I mean, I, I do a lot of driving, so I listen to these audios, and you know, everything can come through the iPhone now, so, so it's fantastic. Yeah, so I think, yeah, so. But but no, I saw Simon Sinek again. Um, uh, I think Michael mentioned Simon Sinek. He's a fantastic um, uh, person in America, and and I, I listened to one of his things recently. And he, he, you know, he he his whole life is speaking in front of thousands of people. Now his whole life has been turned upside down because he has to now change his whole thing onto doing what we're doing now onto onto, onto Google. So it's very very interesting. But he's a wonderful person. Speaks a lot of sense, um, and very yeah. Yeah, lovely. Thanks ever so much for that. Um, David, uh, we'll come back to you. Obviously, people may be asking some sort of close question a bit later on, and I'm sure we'd be happy to sound for a minute or two if people got some other questions. So do put them in the chat. We will try and get to those, or they will try and get to those if we can, a little time. Um, what I'd like to do now is, um, I think, David, thank you very much for that, is very quickly introduce you other things as well. So next week, uh, we'll, uh, Chris, how do you pronounce this lovely lady's name? Help me out this so I get this wrong. <laughs> Thank you for that, Rupert. Um, I think it's I think it's Kaylin, but I do need to double check with it. It was on my, on my mind, so uh, uh, yeah, it's Kay, I think it's Kaylin. But we'll so, uh, I'll, I, I, I'll, I'll apologize um, to her um, offline this week. <laughs> and I'll get right for next week. So, <laughs> uh, so we've got um, Kaylin is very well prepared, by the way. I think Chris sent her the um, uh, document that we asked people to complete before they come on air, and. Um, Within about uh, 12 hours or something, Kevin had already sent it through along with about seven or eight photographs. So uh, it was incredibly well prepared, but I love that title she's given it, Chief Energy Officer. I had to short headline a bit, but I think it's great. And what she plans to cover there um, is so complements what David is talking about today. I'm dying to know what well cultate, uh, what does I have to say that word, Chris? Or someone help me with it? Um, I'm not sure, but um, we'll know. Well that. Sorry? The Wellculator. A well -culator. Do you know what a well -culator is? Because I've not heard of that one at all. I, I think I think it's um, it's a little methodology to enable you to identify how well you're living. I think in terms of yeah. your kind of health and well-being. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll get a little bit of um, help and guidance as to maybe how we can grade wh where we are at the moment with the way that we're we're being. I guess um, you know linked, probably related a little bit the conversation we had a few weeks ago with Farron, You know about shed. You know, sleep, get your head sorted, ed, um, exercise, diet. Um, and that's a nice way to think about those four important principles to yeah. help build your energy. So we'll build on some of that, I'm sure, next week. I'm really looking yeah. forward to it. I, I think it's a little bit of competition here, actually. By the way, Stuart, if you're with us, can you join us in the green room? Because we need to bring you in in just a second, if that's all right. So I meant to give you a heads up. Uh, so just use that link again. But so isn't there a bit of rivalry between Neil and... Uh, um, uh, sorry, Neil, and also uh, Farron over this uh, shed one because of who came up with the idea first. But uh, uh, it's one of these great things when you've got great people on these live streams, great ideas come out. So uh, 
<laughs> no doubt we'll better sort that out one day, Chris. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to give uh, um, Stuart a moment or two just to join us, and um, we'll come back to him in just a second. But fundamentally, as we talked about last week, we do uh, care passionately um, about helping people on their journey. We know it can be a pretty tough place, whether you happen to be in your early 20s or late teens, or equally, if you're a company director employing thousands of people, um, there may be people you just can't confide with. And if you're a company of one, then it can be very tough. And especially at times like this, we need to make sure we've got the mental support around us. Um, I saw some comments earlier on that were made about people sadly giving up. Uh, unfortunately, there is a lot of help out there. I'd like to feel that we make a bit of a difference, but actually there are things like bounce back loans, which we've talked about many times before. Uh, we successfully got ours through 48 hours ago, which took mm -hmm. six weeks. I think Chris rather annoyingly, considering he joined, he actually applied about 10 days after me, got his through about three weeks ago, didn't you, Chris? So. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good to know, though. I was I was already a client, Rupert, of HSBC, so it's nice to know that we look at the clients first and not just the new ones. No, so that was good. Well, Patrick at HSBC did get me sorted in the end, so um, he, he did a great job. But seriously, though, I would say that a little bit in jest. Um, just bear in mind, uh, at the times like this, you need to make sure you've got money in the bank, uh, you know, for, partly for reserves, but also to make sure you can spend it on the right things in your business. And if you don't know about it, then 0% interest first year, pretty easy to get because they don't take the normal underwriting criteria, 100% backed by the government. You're not asked to give personal guarantees, which is another big one. Normally, directors of companies have to give personal guarantees. Um, and after the first year, it's 2.5%. So to be frank, if you think you need a bit of money, even if you put it away in reserve and repay it within 12 months, potentially cost you nothing. But you've got that bit of extra security so just bear that in mind uh so just keep on banging on about it sort of regularly but seriously and there's several people have been a number of people have been successful in getting it and it's making a big difference in moving forwards um last week we did talk about these uh, these five uh, aspects within the challenge um i don't propose to go any detail about this today uh, but those of you who were involved last week who wants to know a little bit more about this now um, people, if, if someone's interested in this, do feel that you can plug in after today. Just contact Mural on the, on, the, on the number below or Mural's email address, and she'll set up a call with me or with herself. And we'd love to try and assist you a little bit further. Um, now, Stuart, are you in the green room yet? I got a feeling we may not have given you enough notice to get in there. Um, so if you can, just do join us. We'd love to have you on the program. If not, I'll tell your story for you, Stuart. Uh, so, um, in which case, uh, I can't see David's been able to, Stuart's been able to join us yet. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Stuart and also Nikki as well. There was a bit of competition last week between Stuart and Nikki, okay, because we did have this top prize, which is worth just under £7,000. Um, uh, yes, yeah, Stuart, I emailed you the link a bit earlier on. If you uh, can find it, you should have got it. Um, Actually, bear with me. I might be able to give you the link, actually. Just bear me a second. I haven't done this before, um, but I can't see how to do it. Uh, no, Mir Miral, can you see a link there? I don't think I can, actually. Uh, but uh, if you find it, can we let Stuart... I don't know if I can invite you in another way. I don't think I can. Uh, Stuart, so sorry, but I did drop you an email, a link a bit earlier on, so I think we might have missed it. But anyway... Uh, a little bit of story about Stuart. Um, he was actually on the show about six, seven weeks ago. Um, Stuart does a lot around running an online platform, uh, particularly for minority groups. Uh, and, uh, all right, hang on a second. Have we got Stuart? I don't think we got Stuart yet, have we? Okay, so um, with that, uh, basically, Stuart, with dogged determination, in fact, he must have been listening to Neil and to Farron, because almost with military precision, he decided to join the five-day challenge. He set a goal that he was going to win the competition. And I rang him up um, a couple of days ago and said, I've interested you. Um, well done on getting 100%, by the way. But how did you how did you do it? And also, how did you manage to complete the questionnaire so quickly? Um, so, And I could see other people still uh, entering their results. And he said, well, what I decided to do, I set out to win from the very beginning. I basically made loads of notes throughout the week. And what I did is also lots of screen grabs of your slides. 
And what I then did is copy and pasted those into like a, a slide deck. So I've got everything immediately to hand. So the moment you said go on the Friday, um, you actually already pretty well got the answers already worked out. And the answers weren't easy. I think the average was between 60 and 70%, which has got a good result. Now, interestingly enough, uh, something I was discussing with Nikki two days ago was um, Nikki just got one answer wrong. And she wasn't quite sure which one it was. And um, Nikki, I'm pleased to say, did actually win the second prize, which was a 50 pound Amazon voucher. And I had a bit of discussion with her. And when we, if, if, uh, if, it got, if both of them had got the same score, I would have actually had to uh, drop out of the loop. I would have had to bring someone else in to act as the uh, arbiter on this, because I've known Nick Stewart a little bit from before. I don't know Nikki particularly prior to that conversation, because with a tiebreaker question, it would have come down to that. I would have felt I would have to bring someone else to make that decision over who actually won the prize. But interesting enough, if you ask me to choose on the tiebreaker question, Although Stuart answered it very differently to Nikki uh, and so on, both it would be impossible for me to have decided. So uh, uh, Stuart were a very wealthy, a worthy winner. I will say that Nikki, the other reason that Nikki almost got to 100% was because again, she went in with almost military precision. I uh, didn't grab it, go as far as grabbing the screens, but she did make lots of notes and she made sure she was there all, for all five days. Okay. so. I think there's a lot to be learned from this as well. You know, if you've got dogged determination, just you know, go go with it, and something good will really come out of it. And obviously, hopefully, there was lots of other winners last week. So, congratulations, Stuart. Uh, well done, Nick, as well. Though we didn't quite get there, we will be running something else like this in the next couple of months. So, we will probably have a a prize of similar value. Uh, but uh, well done, anyway. So. Anyway, thanks very much for those of you who've joined us. I'm so sorry, Stuart, that we couldn't get you on air today. Um, and how you can just reach people if you'd like to do so afterwards. These are Chris's contact details there. And obviously we've got David Fox Pitt with us and there is his email address. Also, I'll just pr quickly bring up this uh, particularly, particular URL which is relevant for this uh, program that he's running at the moment. Just give me a second. Uh, which is particularly for people who are, are younger, perhaps just left school or decided, got disillusioned and not decided not to join university. So do reach out to via that URL as well. So I don't know if we've had any questions come up or closing questions or comment, comments come up in the uh, uh, last uh, few minutes. Um, and uh, But I uh, just wanted to say a very big thank you to everyone for taking part. Also, I do want to just give a big thanks to Mural as well, because Mural behind the scenes, um, I didn't mean to properly introduce Mural today. And uh, uh, I, unfortunately, my enthusiasm to press all the buttons, uh, you would not have left out Mural, but Mural is the person behind the scenes, a bit like uh, David's got Joanna behind the scenes to make sure everything happens. Mural is not my wife, by the way. Uh, my wife is next door. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mural's saying, thank goodness. Uh, but uh, I'd like to say a very big thanks to Mural. Just behind the scenes, she makes sure it all, all happens. Uh, so, anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Lovely you joining us, and see you next Thursday at five o'clock. So, take care. Have a good week. Bye. Good. Thank you very much.